Calipeg 2.1 is introducing a new studio interface to help you organize your production. The studio is the first interface you see when you open Calipeg. It gathers all the shots, scenes and folders. When you start the app for the first time, the studio is empty. Tap on plus in the top right corner and create a new shot, a new scene or a new folder. Tap on new shot to access the panel to edit all the settings of your shot and create it. In the pop-up that appears, you can name your shot. Choose the size of the canvas. You can either double tap here to change the value or slide like that. You can also choose the FPS of your animation and you can choose the length of your animation shot in seconds. It is set to one second by default and you can of course change it within your shot. Number of shots to create allows you to create multiple shots at once and by creating multiple shots, you can choose to insert them in a new scene or not. Tap on preset to choose between various dimensions presets. Add preset allows you to save your custom canvas size and give it a name. Add a preset, square 2000, and now I have my new preset here. And I can change their order with a long touch. And I can also slide to rename or delete my preset. I will create my shots here. Tap on plus, new scene to create an empty scene. Scenes can contain multiple shots. You can create a new shot directly with the plus block at the end of a scene. And you will get the same window here to define what your shots will be. Tap on plus and new folder to create an empty folder. And now I could just drag and drop with a long touch my shot in a scene or in a folder. And I can also drag my entire scene into a folder here, which will contain the first shot I created in addition to the scene containing two shots. You can add multiple shots within a scene and you can add multiple shots, scenes and folders within a folder. Tap on import in the top right corner. If you want to create a shot with an existing image or video from your photo album, your files, or simply by creating one using the camera. You can also import calipeg.peg files from your files or import an image sequence. Here I imported a few animation shots and if I want to organize them, I can for example here long touch and drag this one on this one and create a scene called fruits and at any time I can just drag and drop a shot into a scene or drag them out of the scene with a long touch. It's also possible with a folder, for example here I create a folder, test, to open a shot I can just tap on it. or tap on open. And you can see here there is a new option called compress, which allow you to compress your shot and make it way lighter while keeping it in your studio. For example here my shot is almost 4 gigabytes, and I just tap on compress. What's happening here is basically the same as exporting your shot as a .peg file, but you can keep it in the studio to stay organized and you don't have to import it again. And you can see here it became 6 megabytes. And at any time you can just tap on it, decompress it, and work again on your animation. The studio displays elements in the following order. Shots, scenes, and folders. But you can decide how the elements are organized within these categories here. Most recent files will sort your shots, scenes, and folders according to the last time the shot or contained shot was opened. User order will let you decide and change the order of your shots, scenes and folders. For example here, I create a new scene and I can decide the order of them with a long touch and drag. And then alphabetical order will sort the elements in alphabetical order. When you are using the user order, you can drag and drop the elements where you want. I can take this shot out of the scene and put it anywhere. The placement of the shots Scenes and folders will remain the same, but elements inside can be moved. I can also take that and put it in a folder and then move the order. And I can long touch and drag and put it out in the studio. You can drop shots in scenes or folders and you can drop scenes in folders and put them out like that. 
Tap on this icon in the top left to open or close the sidebar and manage your filters. You have access here to a search bar, so I can say fruits, and then I can go to my scene here or directly my shot and open it. In the sidebar, you can choose to filter certain categories to display in the studio. There are four categories here, shots, scenes, folders, and colors. If you tap on only in the shots, it will display only the shots in the studio. Scenes and folders will not be displayed. Uncompressed displays only uncompressed shots, and the scenes and folders containing uncompressed shots. Here, there is no change because everything is uncompressed. But for example here, if I compress lip sync, it won't be there anymore if I filter. And if I go to compressed, there is only this one. So basically, if you want to see all your shots, which are not contained in scenes or folders, you just tap only and you have that display. I tap only in the scenes here and I can only see my scenes. I can filter for fruits, but here I can see only scenes within fruits. So there is nothing here, but if I tap on only to disable it, I can see only my scene. That's a quick way to just go to a scene. The same with folders, only here, in the studio, so there is one, and in test, there is nothing. But if I create a folder here, test 2, it will appear when I filter folders only within test. The color filters are the color you assign to your shots. There are a few colors by default which you can edit, delete or assign to your shots. With a long touch here, I can edit the color and the title. And I can also delete that label. Tap on a label to display only the shots with the assigned color. For example here, there is of course nothing. But if I assign a color to this shot here, by tapping on the circle in the top right corner of the shot, I can choose a color, for example done here, and if I filter, I will see only this one. I can also create a new label, for example here, I can tap, create, I choose for example that kind of color here, and I name it whip for work in progress. And now I can assign it here, and I can assign it to, to this one here, whip. It's also possible to just drag and drop with a long touch the color on any shot. For example, I want to define that shot here as done, so I just long touch on the color and drag it here. And if you want, you can tap here and tap on none to remove the color from the shot. And if I want, I can go to shots only, tap on select, select a few shots here, and define a color, like that. And I can also go to more here and clear the color tags of all the selected shots. When you can see shots only, you can select multiple sheets with a tap and tap drag, like you would do to select several sheets within a shot. But you cannot select multiple shots here with a tap and tap drag, because that would mean to select folders and scenes at the same time. But you can still select multiple shots and the scene and decide to do an action here. For example, compress everything. At the bottom of the sidebar, you have the possibility to compress all the shots in the studio. You can also read the total number of shots. For example, here I have 15 and it takes 48 gigabytes on my storage. And I can also see how much storage there is left on my iPad. Compressing shots will allow you to free storage space on your iPad. For example, here I will select those shots, go to more and compress. And you can see here it takes 48 gigabytes. And now my 15 shots take 34 gigabytes. And at any time I can tap decompress and it will decompress the shot and open it. You can tap on the three dots menu on the shot, a scene or a folder to access the options. You can rename your shot, duplicate the shot, export the shot or selected shots, export only the images of the shot, timing and structure will not be exported, but it could help in a few situations, and then you can delete the shot, the scene, or the folder. Different options can be displayed according to the element type, shot, scene, folder, and whether the shot is compressed or not. For example here, I have a few more options than here. The exporting option is very useful, 
because now you have access to the full export panel from the studio. So I can choose to export it as a sequence MP4 without even opening my shot. And what's very cool here is that I can select different shots and even a scene here and tap on export. And then I can export several shots at once, for example here within a video format. But I could also select Calipeg or even JSON here and export all my shots to Adobe After Effects. For a scene or a folder, you can split, for example here I split this group and my two shots will go back into the shots section. If a shot is compressed, you can also decompress it here. If you tap on select and select a few shots, tap on more and you can duplicate, compress or group your selected shots. For example here, I create a group, a folder, demo and I have my demo folder here. And if I add, for example, a to-do label here, at any time I can just select, double tap and drag if I'm on a shot section, go to more and clear color tags. This new studio is made for better organization within your production. We hope it will help you work more efficiently and your feedback and comments are welcome so we can add even more useful features for you in the future updates of Calipeg. In Calipeg 2.1, GPU is now used to render most of the images and transforms, meaning a way faster transform layer and overall performance improvements. Also, it's now possible to draw on layers with active transform layers. We added a box surrounding current layer when inside a transformation layer. So you can see here the moving drawing sheet and you can draw anywhere in it. It makes transformation way easier to use. Paint Engine is now using GPU as well, meaning better performances. Within your brush settings, you can now use the rotation style of the tip. For example here, it's none. It looks like that. Random, it will look like this. You can also define it to the stylus azimuth or line angle. And within the brush settings, you can also activate color mix and use the smudge. It's basically a color mix without adding colors. A nice addition to your animation workflow here, you can activate the onion skin, but you can also long touch on it to enable or disable the display sheets. And as usual, you can go to the advanced settings here, onion skin to change the colors or the rendering position, back or front. We added a new tool here, which allows you to select a layer by selecting pixels. For example here, I know that under that pixel there are several layers and I can go for example here to paint and it will select my layer automatically. So at any point you can just focus on a part here, select and go where you need to. In the menu of the layers and of the sheets, we added a little information button here so you can learn about what the icons mean. When you play your animation, you now have the timestamp here. And just as a reminder, you can always go to the settings here, into timeline, and define if you want your timeline metric to be frame or time. The magnet tool is now at the bottom of the interface. With the magnet activated, it will push the neighbors. If you disable it, it can be extended to the next sheet, and then it will push. A little detail here, if you select several sheets which ends at the same frame, you can extend them at once. This icon here means that you can push neighbors with or without the magnet. This one here means that you don't push the neighbors. You can go until that and you can go further. If you long touch on the magnet, it will compress the timeline to fill the gaps. If the push behavior push neighbors is activated, but the new feature here is that you can activate the don't push neighbors behavior and if you long touch on the magnet it will extend the sheets to fill the gaps. Once more here 
It can be really useful if you just work with a tons of gaps and you want to keep your timing and just extend everything. Here I added a few markers. As a reminder, you can double tap marker and then you tap what you want. You can choose your color. You can delete it. You can go to the settings here in the timeline and define that you always show marker descriptions or not. But the new feature here is that you can now flip between markers into flip and you define your flip style. Frames. Sheets. Or markers. And it also works with the keyboard shortcuts. If I lock a layer, tapping on the lock icon will now unlock it. And it works, of course, with several layers. If you work with cycles, you can now select a cycle and define the number of cycles. For example, here I select both. I do three and I select them here and I will do six to get my complete animation. You can go to the settings here in the general tab and define your maximum number of undos. By default, it's 100, but for example, here I can define it to 400. Of course, it will take more space because it will have much more data to handle, but you can define it as you wish. You can also go to the canvas here and disable the rotation of the canvas. That's what I do mostly. And if I want to rotate, I just turn the iPad itself. And you can also disable the zooming on the canvas, depending on your needs. That's it for this update video. I hope you like the new features and improvements of Calipeg 2.1. You can download Calipeg 2.1 on your iPad App Store. Thanks a lot for watching and have fun animating with Calipeg.